Hey there guys, welcome to this video. My name is Pushpinder Gill and in this video we are going to be talking about quantitative comparison questions and I've specifically picked up uh, some hard questions so that you can see how I solve these questions and I've just picked them up uh, and I haven't solved them. Uh, I, I don't know what the, these questions are so I just picked them up and I've just posted them on uh, on a presentation and I'm solving them with you so I what I want you to know is I want you to know how I solve these questions what do I see when I read a question you know what do I try to understand you know I think that would be a better way for you to understand uh, how to tackle hard questions rather than me preparing for those questions beforehand and then just giving you uh, giving you an approach which is very hard to come by when you actually see a hard question uh, and you don't know anything about it. So so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so we will uh, we will start with the first question. Okay, so here it is a question. So let me get to change the color. Okay, so it says that uh, in the figure ABC above, ABCD is a parallelogram. So as soon as I see that, okay, before I even start with the question, there are some basics of solving these type of problems. That is the QC problems. Uh, I have already talked about that in the videos. But there are few underlying basics that I want to talk about is that first of all, you got to read the question very, very carefully. And you have to kind of uh, write the question off on your scratch paper, not like write the right all the parts of the question to kind of draw everything on your scratch paper like you don't want to be looking at your scratch paper and then again at the screen and then scratch paper and the screen you're gonna some some information is actually lost in that so you want to recreate this diagram in your scratch paper and you want to make sure that you uh, place every information that is given to you from the screen uh, to your scratch paper right and that is something that you will develop the coding for that that is something that you will develop so as soon as I read ABCD is a parallelogram so I will make these marks that can actually remind me that these lines are par parallel to each other so this is what I have and this is 125 as soon as I know if this is 125 this is a parallelogram this is going to be equal to uh, 180 minus uh, 125 so that is going to be, I'm going to use my calculator because it's allowed in GRE, but you know, it's easy. So that's going to be 55 degrees, right? So this is what we have, right? So, uh, sorry, this is not 55. Let me erase that. Okay, this is not 55 this is 55 because sum of adjacent angles is uh, equal to 180 degrees and opposite angles are equal right this is a theory that we actually know from here so if the lines are parallel to each other if this is angle x uh, this is angle 180 minus x that means this is angle x if this is angle x this is angle x that means this is 180 minus x and the same can be done here so the opposite angles are they sum to 180 and uh, the adjacent, sorry, the adjacent angles sum to 180 and the opposite angles, uh, they are equal, right? So in a parallelogram, these angles are equal to each other, right? While these angles, their sum is 180 degrees. Okay, enough of that. So the question here says that uh, ABCD is a parallelogram and we need to get the area of ABCD and then we have 24, right? So uh, as we've been given the site 6 and 4, 24. Right. So imagine if this was a square. Right. Imagine if this was a uh, sorry, if this was a rectangle. Right. So then you would have the angle here to be 90 degrees. Right. So, and this would be six and this would be four. So the area, the total area that you will have, uh, the total area that you will have that will actually be equal to 24. Right. Now, what if now what are you doing here? What is the difference? The difference is that this is something which becomes something like this right now there are multiple ways of solving this question but the way that I'm thinking right now is that uh, I want to find out the area of this parallelogram so what I will do is I will actually try to recreate its height you know this is the height of this parallelogram right and of course if this over here is 125 degrees that means this over here is 55 degrees right and of course if this over here is 6 if this over here is 6 this part this height is going to be something less than 6 
right? So this height is going to be less than 6. So what is the area of a parallelogram? So area of a parallelogram is nothing but the base of the parallelogram, that is this, times the height of the parallelogram, right? So area of the parallelogram is base times height. So what is going to be the area of this parallelogram? That is going to be base, which is 4, times the height. And height is something which is less than 6. So that means my answer is going to be less than 24. If my answer is going to be less than 24, which means this is going to be less than 24, which means quantity B is greater than quantity A. So what did I do here is I actually compared, I, I wanted to compare it with a rectangle, but I found an easier way. The easier way was uh, that actually I tried to recreate its height. And this, if this is 6, this is going to be less than 6 because in a triangle, the in a right angle triangle, the diagonal is always greater than uh, the, the, uh, the, the height. So if this is the diagonal, this is the height. I mean, uh, so what I want to say is, I want to say is that diagonal is always greater than its height. So uh, if diagonal is always greater than its height, uh, then the area of this parallelogram is going to be less than 24, right? Okay, so the answer is B. So hope you got this question, guys. I hope you understood this. I'll be moving on to the next one. So this question here says that set S consists of five objects. Okay, so you have five objects. Okay, and uh, this is something that you will write in your scratch paper. Quantity A, the number of subsets that set S, uh, of set S that consist of one object. And here the number of subsets of sets that consist of four objects. So uh, let's say that the set S is five objects. Let's say A, B, C, D, E. These are the five objects. And the number of subsets of set S that consist of one object. So how many subsets can I have which consist of one object? That's just A, B, C, D, and E, right? So that is the number of subsets of S uh, that actually consists of one object. So that means the set S has, uh, so how many, so what is the quantity here? The quantity here is five. And the number of subsets that the set S that consists of four objects. So now what do I need to do is I need to create four objects. Now it's very easy to do that. That is you'll have A, B, C, D, or you'll have A, B, C, E, right? Uh, you can have, uh, well, I know I have a very easy way of solving this, but I'll, I'll do it this way first and then I'll show you the easier way. So I have A, B, C, E, then I have A, B, D, uh, uh, sorry. So instead of, so you can actually place E everywhere. You can pla place E here, you can place E here, uh, you can place E here, you can pla place E here, right? So that will give you uh, four different ways, right? Uh, and the number of subsets that actually contain, or you can have no E also. So you'll have four ways of placing E every at every point, uh, which would be A, B, E, D, uh, a, E, C, D, E, A, C, D, and then you have A, B, C, D. So you have four plus one, that is five different ways of doing this. So you have five different ways of doing this and you have five different ways of doing this. That means both quantities are equal. Now that is where, that's one way of solving this. Like if you don't want to use any mathematics and you just want to compute the answer. Like you have five different subsets and here you have five different subsets and here you have five different subsets. Another way of solving this problem is that uh, it would be equivalent. The, the answer to this would be equivalent of solving in how many ways you can choose one object out of five objects. So that's 5C1. Right, and here you can say the number of ways, uh, the number of ways of choosing an object, uh, of choosing four objects out of five objects. That's five C four. And if you've seen the videos of combinations, you would know that five C four is actually equal to five C one because n C r uh, is equal to n C n minus r because of its symmetric nature. Like the number of ways you can choose one thing out of five things is actually equal to the number of ways you can choose four things out of five things. Right, so so that means these both are going to be equal. Hence, the answer option C is going to be my answer. So, hope you got this point, guys. I hope you understood the question. Uh, so, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this question says that we have an equilateral triangle PQR, which is formed by joining the centers of the circle. So, these are the centers of the circle, and each pair of the circle has exactly one point in common. So that means these are the tangents. So these circles are just touching each other, 
So the question says the perimeter of triangle PQR and here it says the circumference of the circle with center Q. So uh, equilateral triangle, so this is an equilateral triangle, right? So that means all the sides of this, this triangle are equal. And uh, if this is radius R1, right, uh, that means this is also R1. If this is R2, this is also R2. If this is R3, this is also R3, right? So, so that's what it is. That, that is our equilateral triangle here. And the circles just touch each other. So that means it's, uh, okay, so that means they're tangent to each other. Uh, now the perimeter of triangle PQR. So what is the perimeter of triangle PQR? That is going to be two times r1 plus r2 plus r3 that is going to be the, the this this quantity here here right because you have two times r1 two times r2 and two times r3 and then here you have circumference of the circle with center q so there you have the circumference of the circle with center q so here you have 2 pi r3 right so that is the circumference of the circle with center Q and what we have to do is we just have to compare uh, these two quantities which quantity is actually uh, greater and which quantity is not it's, it's, it's not great okay so how do we do that now equilateral triangle is formed by all these circles now one thing over here it's something that you can see is this by the symmetry by the nature of this particular problem right something that I can say is that R1 has to be equal to R2, that has to be equal to R3, right? Why is that? Because the, if the circles were not tangent to each other, if the circles would intersect within themselves, then I could say there is a possibility of them not being equal. But since this, uh, this is where they actually touch each other, uh, th then one thing that I have to assume that this length is going to be equal to this length and this length is going to be equal to this length because these are all equilateral triangles. And again, I can prove that as well. So R1 plus R3 is actually going to be equal to R2 plus R3 right, which is going to be equal to R1 plus R2, right, because this is an equilateral triangle, all three sides are equal to each other. And that means sum of any two numbers is equal to the sum of the any other two numbers. So that, that means uh, from here, I can say that these, these numbers are actually going to be equal. Or e you want to prove you can actually uh, equate these two. So from here, you get R1 plus R3 is equal to R1 plus R2. Right, so these two gets cancelled, so you get R2 is equal to R3. Right, so the moment you get R2 is equal to R3, you can actually substitute in the first one. You get R1 plus R3 uh, is actually equal to R2 plus R3, which is two times, uh, which is uh, two times R3. So that means R1 is actually equal to R3. So that means all three are equal to each other. So that means this becomes two times three R1 right and this becomes 2 pi r1 i'm just making them equal in each term so this is 6 r1 and this is 2 pi r1 and what is pi pi is something which is 3 plus right it's greater than 3 so this becomes 2 into 3 plus into r1 so that means it becomes 6 plus r1 so which is greater is 6 plus r1 greater or it's uh, 6 r1 greater well of course 6 plus r1 is going to be greater than 6 r1 hence answer going my answer is going to be option b let's see what is that okay that's what it is right so so the only thing that this question they that this question was asking you to do is just kind of figure out that these three sides are equal and i had a hunch you know i had a big hunch that these side three all the, all the all the radiuses are equal uh, but i wanted to prove that and this is how i proved it right and i'm actually you know i'm solving i think i've seen this question before but i'm solving it after a long long time and uh, you know this is how i approach this question uh, without even solving it before uh, before uh, making this video right so i hope you understood this let's move on to the next one Okay, so this is a question where it says that which is greater, right? So is this greater or this greater? And we've been given this figure, right? So we have b square plus 2ad, and then we have uh, a plus d whole square uh, minus c square. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to say a square plus d square plus 2ad minus c square, right? So this uh, is a square plus d square minus 2ad okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 2ad from both sides right because 
uh, I know A and D are positive, so I can do that. So 280, 280 goes, and you have B square here, and you're left with A square plus D square minus C square. So what do I have to compare? I have to compare B square and A square plus D square minus C square, right? Which is A square plus D square minus C square. So here's what I'm going to do now. Again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add C square to both sides, and I'm going to get, so this is quantity A, which is uh, b square plus c square and this over here is quantity b which is a square uh, plus d square right so now the question becomes this square plus this square or this square plus this square and I only the only information i have these angles so again let's try to compare it with the standard so let's suppose that we are looking at a at a rectangle you have a and you have d and you have b and you have c or not even a rectangle, let's say we are looking at a square, right? So in square, everything is equal, right? That is what we have. Now imagine you were to make this angle greater and you were to make this angle smaller. So if you were to make this angle smaller, this is what, if, what will happen. And if you were to make this angle greater, this is what would happen. Now, when these lines intersect with each other, you can pretty much see that these lengths are going to be greater than these lengths, right? <coughs> I'll repeat myself again. When you have a square, and this is A, this is D, this is B, this is C, when you make this angle smaller, like let's make it really small, you know, like this, you make this angle smaller, you make this angle bigger, so when you do that, what actually happens when they meet each other? These lengths are very small as compared to these lengths. So that means A square plus D square is actually going to be greater than B square plus C square. So that means uh, quantity B is actually greater. Right. So this was a tricky question. It required a little bit of juggling around here. I think that must that should become kind of a little bit of uh, 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 natural to you guys because you've been solving GRE questions for a long time now so you should be eliminating these two ADs you should be uh, trying to get it to you know the most natural form that you can get and then you just compare it with some regular figure right and again understand you're only given two minutes to solve this these problems and if you have only two minutes uh, it you don't you know you you should at least have a, a belief that the question will will reveal itself in two minutes if you work if you if you try harder and if you if you use imaginative ways rather than use using easy ways right so so that is important okay so moving on to the next one so this is the question we have it says the numbers in the data have a mean zero I like these questions so the mean is zero And the numbers of uh, number of data elements below the mean, and number of data elements above the mean. Oh, I think the answer should be D. But let me think about it. Uh, the number. So let's let's just try to get some uh, scenarios here. You know that that will actually help. So the mean is zero, and we don't have any kind of. Uh, uh, the numbers in the data and we have numbers so that means there's more than one number numbers in the data have mean of zero so that means uh, you can have minus one uh, zero and one you know so you have uh, these three numbers so their mean is zero because the sum is zero so the numbers of the data below mean so the numbers below mean are negative one and po numbers above the mean are positive one right so that means you have one number below the mean you have one number above the mean right so out of a b c d at least you can eliminate a and b you can say that quantity a is definitely not greater than quantity b and quantity b is definitely not greater than quantity a now let's try to come up with a scenario where c gets eliminated right and this is this is a technique that i've actually shown to you in the in the videos so uh, when would the both the quantities be not equal to each other and we satisfy all the questions uh, all all the statements in the question so uh, what do we want to say? What do we want to do? We want to make sure that the mean is zero and we want some irreg irreg irregularity here. So what I can do is let's make this negative two. This is zero 
and let this be 1 and let this be 1. Right, so these are the numbers in the set. If you add them up, that actually becomes 0, so the mean is 0. So now, number of data elements above the mean. Right, so what is mean? Mean is 0 because negative 2 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1 divided by 4 is actually 0 because that's what it is. So the number of elements greater than the mean are 2 and the number of elements smaller than the mean are are uh, is 1 so that means you can have 1 and 2 here so that means C is also gone hence D is my answer. There you go. I knew it was D but I just wanted to make sure that it's D. So what I did here was it's the classic elimination approach. It's the classic plugging in. So what we, what we've done is it says the number in the data the data set have mean zero, so the mean could be zero, and these are the two possibilities of the sets that they can be. Uh, and then one possibility gives me answer C, and one possibility gives me answer B. So that means you cannot determine the relationship for the in, from the information provided. Right. So I hope you got this, guys. I hope you understood. Uh, do I have another one? Oh, sorry. Okay. So this question here says that uh, Q and T are the midpoints of opposite sides of the square. So these are the midpoints, right? So that means uh, if this is A, this is A. If this is B, this is B. And of course, this is 90 degrees. This is 90 degrees, right? Uh, that's what we have. And uh, Q and T are the midpoints, and it says the area of P, Q, S, T. So the area of P, uh, Q, S, T. So the area of this parallelogram here, uh, and then 3 by 2, right? And we don't have anything else. Do we have? No, we don't have anything else. Okay, so I think uh, what do we want to do here is to kind of like right, recreate this, right? So this is A, and we don't know this. And it's a sorry, it's a it's a square. So that means this these are a's too, right? Because it's a square. These are midpoints, and these is, this is a square. So all four sides are equal. Well, that becomes easy then. So this is a, and this over here it's a two times a because that's the side of the square. Because this is a and this is a, so it's a classic uh, 90 30 60 triangle. Because in a sorry, it, uh, not not a 90 30 60 triangle. Uh, well, this actually becomes. Uh, a 2a square root 5 so a 2a and square root 5 so there are two types of triangle the GRE test one is 90 30 60 triangle and one is uh, 90 45 45 triangle in 90 45 45 triangle you have if this is x this is also x and this is x square root 2 because that's the isosceles triangle here in that case uh, this over here is x and this over here is uh, square root x uh, this over here is uh, square root 3x and this is 2x. Well, that is not the case that is happening here. So these are not, not the triangles. But what I can do is I can actually get the value of a from here. I can use the Pythagoras theorem which says that a square plus 2a square is equal to square root 5 square. You know, I kind of hovered around in the logic here, but no need for that. So that becomes a square plus 4a square is equal to 5. That means 5a square is equal to 5. That means a is 1. Which means my square is, this is 2. And uh, this over here is 1. And uh, this over here is uh, 2. And this over here is 1. Now for me to get the area of this parallelogram, what I can do is I can get, get the area of the whole square. And then I can subtract two triangles out of it. Right? So I can get the area of the whole square and I can subtract these triangles out of it. So what is the area of the whole square? The area of the whole square is 4, which is 2 into 2, minus the area of this triangle. What is the area of the triangle? Half times base times height, and then multiplied by 2 because I have another one just like that. So then this becomes uh, 4 minus 2, which becomes 2. So this is 2, and this is 1.5. So quantity A is greater than quantity B, right? So I hope you understood this problem here, guys, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, I kind of stumbled around here because I wanted to check out whether I'm forming a 90, 45, 45 or a 90, 30, 60. If that would have been the case. We didn't need to do this, but that wasn't the case. So I used Pythagoras theorem to actually get the value of A and then actually calculate the area.
right so this is what i did so this is where i will say thank you to uh, thank you to all of you to watch for watching this video and uh, uh, i will be coming up with more 700 uh, sorry not 700 i'll be coming up with more hard questions uh, about gre right and uh, other exams so i've started so making those videos and uh, one thing that i want to tell you is that make sure that you like our facebook page uh, uh, that is facebook.com slash perfect scores and uh, also you can check out our website on perfect-scores.com uh, I will be I'll take I'm taking live courses where I actually teach GRE teach GMAT live where you can actually learn from me and interact with me live uh, and uh, I'll take classes every week so you can go for that and you can check out other courses as well on the website right and if you have any concerns any questions you can email us at support at perfectscourse.org uh, I'll be happy to uh, help you out right so thank you very much for watching this video I'll see you in the next one